The all grain method of brewing a bag has been around for a really long time. With the advent of some of the newer all-in-one systems like the Anvil Foundry, they have gone to a stainless steel basket or a malt pipe. In this video, I wanna take a look at getting rid of the malt pipe and just using a bag, just like they did in the past. And I wanna go over what the pros are, what the cons are, and find out is it really worth it to just go with a bag or should you stick with a basket? How's it going? My name's Brian. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and product review videos, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. If you're using a bag with one of these all-in-one systems, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're using and what your experience has been with it. Has your efficiency been better? Has it been the same? Has it been worse? I'd really like to know. So leave me a comment in the comments down below. Now, ever since the Anvil Foundry came out, I have been asked time and time again, what about using a bag? What about using you know, a bag outside of the, the malt pipe? What about using a bag inside of the malt pipe? So all these kind of, the questions kind of got me wondering, well, what about it? So I actually reached out to the brew bag company and they sent me pretty much everything that I'm using for the brew in a bag portion of this video. So big thanks to them. I certainly do appreciate it. And uh, let's dive into the video. All right, so one of the first things that I want to address is that there is no false bottom in the Anvil Foundry. And there are some other brewing systems that have false bottoms that you could use in the Anvil Foundry. The only issue that you've got with those is that the Anvil Foundry outlet is a little bit higher than what those other brewing systems are. So you would have to either re realign or, or bend the feet of the false bottom in order to make it work or add some bolts or something like that to the bottom of it. And I've seen some of you do that. Now, for those of you that still have the ring, they've since done away with the ring and the anvil and they've got some supports that are on the side of the malt pipe now. But for those of you that have the ring, what I did was I used the ring to hold the bag up off of the bottom. And how I did that was I put the bag in there, let it touch the bottom, pulled it up a little bit, put the ring inside, and it's a little bit of a tight fit, but there are some edges. It's kind of a, I don't know, of an octagon shape um, ring. And what I did was I put the nylon webbing that is on the brew bag underneath of those areas that actually touch the kettle. So once I got that in place, I then pushed down on the bag until the center of it would just barely touch the bottom of the kettle. Now you might think, okay, well then it's gonna to touch the bottom of the kettle, but when you get all your grain in there, the bag is gonna expand and pull that bottom center piece up and then you won't have the issue of the bag touching the bottom. Now, if your malt pipe came from Anvil with the supports that hang on the outside of the kettle, and you did not get a ring, you can use some of the binder clips, like what they sent me with the, the bag, and just clip your bag to the outside of the kettle and just determine you know how, how deep you wanna go. And then pull the straps outside of the kettle and latch the lid down and that will definitely, I think it'll hold it in place. I know it did in my case. Kinda of created a, a new recipe for myself, a New England IPA. I wanted to see how the bag would do with a little bit of flaked adjuncts. And the method that I'm using is actually a full volume, no sparge at all. So the recipe called for eight gallons of water, so fill that up, did my water adjustments and everything, and then it was time to mash in. Now on my crush, I wish I could give you an exact figure, but I'm using the Blickman grain mill. And so I used it a pretty, pretty fine crush, and I'll show you a little bit of footage here of the crush so you can kind of get an idea of what the crush was using the bag. And so when I mashed in, the only issue that I had was getting the bag to stay open, and you can use some of the clips that I'm showing in the video here to help hold back the, the nylon webbing straps or the nylon webbing, um, I guess, lift lift supports. And you can do that to keep it out of the way. But I did have a little bit of grain that got on top of the bag. And not a lot, but just a little bit. It was kind of an annoyance, not a big deal. Now, what I did do after I got mashed in, was I actually took a couple of the straps out of the kettle and pressed the lid down with the Anvil Foundry and then latched it because it, it has latches on there. As far as recirculation goes, I used my manifold that I've made in a previous video, and I'll put a link up here to that video so you can see what that is. But you can use one of those little plastic aerators, and I'll put a link in the description down below for that. And so I just basically started the recirculation. I had the pump running about half. And then for this particular uh, experiment, I wanted to see, wanted to make sure that everything would heat up quickly. So I left the power on 100%, and I'm brewing this on 240, the 240 volt mode. So I left the power on 100% and just let it start mashing. Now, one of the things that I didn't do in this is I didn't you know, take the lid off every 15 minutes and stir or anything like that. I wanted to kind of try to be just as lazy and hands-off as possible with this experiment to see how well it did. 
So about halfway through the mash, I opened the lid for a temperature check and lo and behold, the mash temperature was set to 149. And as you can see right here, the mash temperature was actually 149.5. So I have full confidence that the temperature was staying the same throughout the entire brewing system with no issues there. Now, when it came time to do the removal of the bag, I didn't do any kind of a ramp up for mash out or anything like that. I just left it at 149 and then whenever the whole hour was up, I actually have a eyelet in the ceiling of my brew area here. And so I was able to hook up a ratchet lift that was provided to me by brew bag. And it was really simple to get that brew bag up out of there, just start ratcheting it. And the nice thing about it, it had the ratchet has a catch system so that as you're pulling it up, it doesn't slide back down. So basically as you pull up, it locks into place. Now, once I got it up out of the, the kettle, I was able to squeeze the bag. And let me tell you, I squeezed it like it owed me money. So <laughs> I was able to get pretty much every last drop of wort out of there. I probably could have got a little bit more if I had to squeeze a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, I, I squeezed the heck out of it. And that's just kind of a myth in, in my opinion that squeezing the bag is gonna extract tannins or something like that, but it did not do that. Now, one of the things I think, you know, squeezing the bag and trying to get as much out of there as possible, I actually did get just a little bit more volume than what the recipe called for. The recipe called for a pre-boil volume of, I think it was 6.85 gallons. And I had just over seven gallons in the kettle. And as far as efficiency, I'm sure you're all wondering how that went. Um, my pre-boil gravity was supposed to be 1054. And I actually wound up coming in about 1050, something like that. So it's just a little bit, I calculated the recipe at 70%. So it was just a little bit below that. I have no doubt that, you know, with some more trial and error and, and doing some adjustments and whatnot, maybe stirring the mash, you could get it up into the mid seventies, no problem with the basket. As far as the flow, I never had any concerns, you know, that it was gonna overflow the kettle or anything like that. I never had any concerns with uh, having it stop the flow of wort. I never had any issues with it resting on the temperature probe and giving me an error there or anything like that. Now, the other thing that they did provide to me was some of their hop socks. And these socks are like really, really long and skinny. And they're also very fine mesh. So what I did for doing kind of a whirlpool, pseudo whirlpool, I didn't want to have, because I put quite a few hops in the whirlpool or the late edition. I didn't do any bittering hops at all. Um, what I did was I used the hop sock and it worked very well. Um, for the recirculation, I put a hose on the end of the the pipe, the, the return pipe, and then actually put the Blickman quick connect that they make. And I just took the quick connect out of the, the, the nut itself and just used the elbow. And so I put that down into the bag and let it recirculate that way. I did the hop stand for about 10 minutes at 176 on the Anvil Foundry, let that run for about 10 minutes. And then I pulled the hop sack out after that and I was able to basically squeeze every bit of wort out of the hop. So that was nice with the hop sack and I didn't see any any kind of debris or anything coming out of that. So that was that's also a very nice uh, feature or function of the, the hop sacks that they sent me. Now, I would love to tell you exactly how much wort I had post boil, but I would tell you, just because I have a YouTube channel and I make videos does not mean that I don't have stuff that is a disaster sometimes. So I didn't get it on film, unfortunately, but if you, if you see here when I'm transferring the wort over to the Spike uh, Flex Plus, I'm actually, there's a bunch of wart and everything all over the the, uh, the stand that I've got it on. Incidentally, if you wanna know what the stand is, that is a Blickman roll around stand for the Brew Easy system. So if you're interested in that, that's what that is. Um, but there's a bunch of a wart and everything all over there. I, I pulled the, the hose up out of the hop sack and I was pulling on the metal part and the, the silicone tubing that I had the elbow hook to for the Whirlpool came loose and I dropped the, the, uh, the pipe and it fell down on the side. Fortunately, I had it through the handle of the, the foundry, so it just started spraying all over the side of the, all over the side of the foundry, all over the, the roll around cart, all over the pump and everything like that. So fortunately, I was able to grab it and throw it back in there, but crisis avoided there. But I think I probably lost about a pint or so of, uh, of wort there. So <laughs> all in all, everything went really good with the brew bag. And I have to say, I highly recommend their products because you know I, I had zero issues with it at all. The, the hoist worked really well. The gloves that I use to squeeze the heck out of the bag, those are provided to me as well. And those worked really, really well. I, there wasn't any issue with any, I didn't feel like I was getting burned or anything like that. It wasn't any excessive heat transferring through those. So, you know, I'll leave a link in the description for all that stuff from the brew bag. And I wanna say thanks again to them for providing that stuff to, to me to be able to present this to you. So what are the pros and cons of the, the bag in the system? 
Well, let's just start with the cons first. One of the cons is it's another expense, if you will, that you have to spend in order to brew in that fashion. Um, another con is that you really need some kind of a, an overhead hook or some way to lift the bag up out of the kettle. I suppose you could probably do it manually and set it on some kind of a grate or a rack or something like that. But really, to me, I think you need to have some kind of a, an overhead hook or something like that to hook a hoist to in order to be able to use it. Um, one of the other things that I did notice whenever I had the bag hanging out of the kettle is that the nylon webbing, when I had it hanging down below the kind of just draped over the edge, the nylon uh, support system was actually wicking wart out of the out of the kettle. So I started seeing drips of wart on the on the uh, roll around platform and I couldn't figure out what it was then I realized that the bag was actually wicking wart out of the out of the kettle for some reason so well I put a couple of pieces a couple of rags underneath of it and uh, stopped that issue and, and had no problem after that now as far as the pros go I mean it, it's it makes it super easy for cleanup um, I think that you're going to increase the grain capacity by a great deal I mean I had 14 pounds of grain with a couple you know 14 pounds including a couple of uh, pounds of flaked adjuncts and I felt like I probably could have gone six, another six, eight pounds. I would have had to have done probably a sparge method if I did that, but I think you wouldn't have any trouble getting 20 plus pounds in this sack in the anvil foundry. As far as cleaning the bag, it was super easy. I just dumped the grains out for the, for the critters outside and then just rinsed it off, washed it out and hung it up. One of the other pros that I noticed with using the brew bag is that with, with the bag, I, the only debris that I had in the kettle was some of the stuff that spilled over the bag whenever I was doing the mash in. But as far as, you know, as far as crystal clear wart, about halfway through when I took that temperature reading, it was super, super clear. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to be hazy at all. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but, you know, in the end, it actually looked like it was, it looked like it did pretty good. So, you know, as far as uh, clarity goes, I think that's another, another pro of the system. So I ended up with, I think probably about five and a half, maybe a little bit more gallons of wart and it wound up coming in at right around 1060, somewhere around there. So it was about 0 0.04 off of what my expected gravity was, but all in all, for the first time that I've ever used this, I, I'm very happy with the result and uh, you know I, I'm, I'm pleased with how it turned out and the ease of using the bag in the Anvil Foundry. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. We certainly do appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell if you do that. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.